Good morning, Beaumont Church of Christ, here to deliver a word from the Lord for our worship this morning. I know we're still going through situations, and you, as you can see, we are still not in the building, uh, but we will eventually be back in the building when we're given the green light that it is safe uh, for everyone to return uh, so we can make sure no one, is, no one uh, gets ill uh, during this virus. Uh, this morning, I want to come from the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 1. As you know, I've been studying the book of 1 Samuel, and we've started a series on Wednesday night uh, out of the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, but I'm going to go to, to the first chapter, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse number 9. The Bible says, So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking. In Shiloh, now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the afflictions of your maidservant and remember me. And not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, for Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put away your, put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrow spirit. I have drunk, I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicated drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. This morning, I want to talk from the subject uh, real briefly. I want to use for a subject, troubled by something you can't control. Troubled by something you can't control. Many of us understand something about this. Many of us have gone through some things that we found ourselves troubled about situations that we really can't control. We did nothing wrong. We did nothing to get ourselves in the situation, but somehow, some way, life had presented us with a problem that we really can't control. It's something that if we could fix it, we would fix it, but we really can't fix it. But 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 we're in a situation now that we're troubled. It's something that keeps up, up, us up at night, something that keeps us walking the floors late at night, something that's always on our minds. Uh, but the thing that gives us most trouble is the fact that we cannot even control it. Now we find in this text, we find uh, Hannah, a wonderful lady, a wonderful woman of the Lord. We find Hannah uh, who uh, has, is uh, married uh, and Hannah is married to Elkanah. Uh, and, and we find that, that Hannah here is the second wife. Hannah is, Hannah is married and Hannah could not have any children. But the unique thing about it is uh, Hannah could not have children, but the other wife could have children. And the, and the man of the house, the husband, uh, would oftentimes, uh, year after year, go up uh, to the city to worship. Uh, always would go up to uh, Shiloh to worship, and, and, and he would take him and his family up to Shiloh. And he would take Hannah uh, up with him. And when they would get to Shiloh, uh, get to Shiloh, uh, when they would get there, uh, Hannah would Hannah would be sorrowful because she had no children. Not only that, not only that, the other wife, uh, uh, other wife would mock her and provoke her, and 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 reveal, and reveal her. Uh, because she could not have any children, and uh, with and in this instance, we find that Hannah is so upset and so bothered uh, that Hannah could not even eat nor drink, and so Hannah was disturbed, and uh, so whenever uh, Elkanah, uh, uh, her husband, saw her, 
uh, and saw Hannah, and uh, he asked, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you eat and not eat? Uh, and, uh, and why uh, are your heart grieved? Am I not better than uh, two sons? Well, the first thing I want us to look at is as we look, as we launch out, into this thing is, I, I think it's it's worth noting in the text, and it's worth noting in this situation uh, uh, that sometimes uh, uh, some things in life are worth more than things. Some things are, in life are worth more than tangible material things. Some things in life are worth more than money. Some things are in life are worth more than the material things that somebody can give you. You see, you see, you got to understand in this text, uh, uh, Elkanah uh, uh, had given Hannah uh, everything she needs. Even when they would come up to worship uh, and uh, they would offer sacrifices, uh, uh, he, he would make sure that Hannah got a double, double portion uh, because the Lord had closed up her wound. Uh, but the, the thing is is this, uh, even though Hannah got a double portion, uh, and that what Hannah got, received was not worth more than what she really wanted, what Hannah really wanted. Hannah really wanted a son. Hannah really wanted to give birth to a child, a male child. And so Hannah, Hannah uh, was disturbed, even though her husband was given everything he could, but the one thing that she could not give was a child. And so what all the things that Hannah's husband gave her, uh, not that it wasn't important, uh, but it was not it was not worth more than what she really wanted, and that was a child. And so as we keep on keep on transitioning and keep on moving through this thing, we find that whenever we find something here that I think we all ought to try to emulate and mock and mock whenever we go and deal with things um, and we deal with troubles and we're troubled by something that we cannot control. Uh, the first thing when you're troubled by something uh, that you cannot control, uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, you need to go and empty yourself before the Lord. All right, because the truth of the matter is this, y'all. Uh, even though we can't control it, uh, doesn't mean God can't control it. Uh, God can control everything. God can, you remember, God, God, is the, God is the one that hung the moon and the stars. Uh, God is the one that tells the sea where to stop going when they come up on the beach. God is the one that can do anything but fail. There's nothing impossible for God. So just because we can't control it does not mean God can't control it. So what we need to do whenever we're faced with troubles uh, and we're troubled by something that we cannot control, let's give it over to God. Come and empty ourselves before the Lord. Is that all right? Watch this text here, y'all. Watch this text here, y'all. Uh, the Bible says, the uh, Bible says in verse number nine, uh, uh, so Hannah arose from uh, after they had finished eating and drinking um, in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the, on, on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Um, and the Bible says, and she uh, was in bitterness of soul um, and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Boy, if I could just park here for just one minute. Uh, uh, we've got to be careful uh, and we've got to understand uh, that when folk come to the house of the Lord, uh, we don't know what they've gone through to get there. We don't know what their problem is. Uh, we don't know how their, how their spirit is. Uh, uh, but all we know is that they're coming uh, to the house of the Lord. Uh, and whenever they come, some folk, when they come, they are emptying their souls uh, out before the Lord in anguish and prayer, just like Hannah did. The Bible says that Hannah, she came to the house of the Lord, and when she got there, she was weeping and she was anguished. You got to understand some folk, just because sometimes folk cry in church, just because some folk weep in church, just because some folk may even express themselves in welling in church, it's not always because they are in sin. It's not always because 
because they've done something wrong. Sometimes they're just trying to well and reach out to God in a situation because they're troubled by something that they cannot control. Not only, not only do you need to empty yourself, we'll come back to that text about emptying yourself in just a minute, but not only do you empty yourself unto the Lord, but you know what we need to do like Hannah, we've got, we need to make a commitment to God, not just any commitment, but a commitment to God that will cost you something special. Yes, I did. I said it's called. Sometimes we make commitments to God that don't cost us anything. It doesn't really bother us. It's not really a deep uh, commitment to God. But what I love about Hannah in this text here, y'all, in verse number 11, the Bible says, Then she said she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the afflictions of your, ma your maid servant and remember me, not forget your maid servant, here it is, but would give your maid servant a male child. Well, God, if you, well, well, Hannah, if God give you this, what you gonna do? Well, just keep on reading. The Bible says, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Hannah, what are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is if the Lord give me a child, I'm going to give the child back to the Lord and I'm going to give the child back to the Lord for the child to serve the Lord all the days of his life. See, this is not only her emptying herself, but the, and this is not her making just a, a, a shallow commitment, but, but she's making a commitment that's going to cost her something. Yes, God, if God gives her the child, but look at what she's willing to do. She's willing to give that back to God. See, what she's saying, God, is I'm going to make a commitment to you that's going to cost you cost me my own child because I realize it's not my child, it's your child. You gave it to me, so I'm going to give it back to you and I'm going to show you, Lord, that I I know and I am willing to do it for you. Yes, sir. I've got to go. I'm going. I'm closing now. And now watch this last little, this, 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 this last, these last two points. Uh, this last point I want to make uh, is, is a special point, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, because I believe sometimes we, we get confused and we start trying to make uh, ourselves look like other folk. And we start trying to make our worship look like other folk worship, worship, and we start trying to make uh, 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 our, our emptying ourselves look like other folks emptying ourselves. Uh, but what you got to realize, the folk, uh, uh, members, uh, a body of, of, of body of believers, you got to remember and understand this. Uh, realize uh, whenever you empty yourself, uh, your emptying may be misunderstood by some. Uh, some may not understand your emptiness. Some may see uh, your emptiness as something that it's really not. Uh, some uh, I, We see this all the time in, in church when you got folk that's come to worship and they're worshiping God. And, and yes, they may get a little loud. And yes, they may wave their hands. And yes, they may clap their hands. And yes, they may get up on their feet. And sometimes uh, folks start saying, well, they're just trying to put on a show. Uh, they're just trying to bring attention to themselves. Themselves. Well, uh, you've got to start ignoring what folks say, uh, all right? because many times uh, folks folk will uh, misunderstand your pouring out. Uh, and boy, if I had some time, I'll stand here for a minute and tell some folk, realize your emptying out, don't your emptying and pouring out to the Lord uh, may not look like everybody else is emptying out and pouring out to the Lord. Uh, and what the church folk need to realize, uh, stop trying to scrutinize other folks pouring out uh, and just be willing to pour out your Yourself. All right, now watch this thing. I, I, I got to close this thing in verse in verse uh, uh, number verse number number twelve, and the Bible says, and it and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord uh, that Eli watched her. Oh boy, it's some folk that's come to church just to watch. They don't come to worship; they come to watch. But anyway, 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 uh, it says, and now Hannah spoke in her heart. Uh, only her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought there it is. Thought she was drunk. Uh, he 
thought she was drunk because um, her mouth was moving. Yes, maybe she looked like a drunk woman. Yes, maybe she looked like somebody that was intoxicated. The truth of the matter is, sometimes when you're trying to reach God and you're in a bad situation, sometimes life will make you look drunk. Life will make you look like you're under the you're intoxicated. Life will make you look bad. But you know what? When you're trying to pour yourself out to the Lord and you're trying to get God to do something uh, and to fix your problem uh, that you can't control. Uh, you, you don't worry about how you look. You don't worry about what folks say. You don't worry about how you sound. Uh, you don't worry about what folks think. You know why? Because you're pouring yourself out unto God. All right, and watch this now. And so Eli, Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put away your wine away, uh, put, put your wine away uh, from you. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 but Hannah uh, answered and said, no, my Lord, I am not a woman. I, I, I am a woman of sorrow of spirit. You see, sometimes we make poor assumptions uh, about what we see. We make poor assumptions about folk, uh, all right, uh, that we really don't know what their issue is, uh, but we assume something. Uh, and when we assume something, um, sometimes we're wrong. Uh, and, and what happens is um, uh, you, we, we, could, we could run folk off from the church uh, by making a false assumptions uh, and opening our mouths uh, when we shouldn't even open our mouths. Um, and, and, and you know, you know, you know, uh, Hannah was a woman um, that was sorrowful of spirit uh, and now she's been accused uh, of being drunk. She's been accused uh, of being in intoxicated. She's been accused of being on wine, but no, she's not on wine. She's just sorrowful of spirit, and she's trying to re reach God and get our situation fixed by God. And so she says, I have not drank, drunk neither wine nor intoxicated drinks, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Uh, I just stopped by to tell somebody uh, when you're troubled uh, by something you can't control, uh, sometimes uh, you've got to pour your spirit, uh, pour your soul uh, out before the Lord uh, and ignore what folks say, ignore how folk look, uh, ignore how folk talk, uh, and ignore what folks think uh, because you're pouring your spirit out. Uh, out, out unto the Lord because you want God to fix your troubled situation that you cannot control. And what I love, my boy, now get time, go and finish studying this text. You know the end of the story. You know that 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 that, that Eli, Eli decided once he heard the whole story that Eli, Eli told the woman, go your way, go your way. Way, uh, go in peace. Uh, the God of Israel uh, will grant your petition. Uh, 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 go grant your petition. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, know how it all came out. Uh, as uh, yes, she had a problem that she could not could not control. She could not control whether she got pregnant or whether she could not get pregnant. But she took it to the man who could control it. And when God got through with it, you know the Bible says that as time passed, as time passed, that Hannah did did get pregnant. Hannah did bore a child by the name by the name of Samuel. And you know that Hannah kept her commitment to the Lord. Bible says that after Hannah had winged the child, that she took the child back up to Eli, and she presented the child before the Lord, and she left her baby that she had been promised that she had promised God that she would leave in the house of Eli. For Eli uh, to, to raise the child, uh, for the child uh, to work in uh, the house of the Lord. Uh, and you know uh, that Samuel worked in the house of the Lord, uh, for the uh, house of the Lord, uh, all the way uh, until the day he died. Uh, I stopped by to tell somebody uh, whenever you have a problem, uh, you're troubled uh, by something you can't control, uh, give it over to the Lord. Uh, you're troubled by something uh, that you can't control. 
uh, let God control it. Uh, troubled by something uh, you can't control, uh, let God work on it. Uh, he has a way um, of fixing things uh, that we can't fix. Uh, he has a way um, of fixing problems uh, that we can't fix. Uh, has a way uh, of, of doing things uh, that we can't do nothing about. Uh, he has a way uh, of blessing us. We can't bless ourselves. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, when you're troubled uh, by something uh, you can't control, uh, give it to the one uh, that can control everything uh, in life. That's God. God bless you. And if you're here today, you're not a child of God. You come by hearing the word of God, believing that that you heard, repent of your sins, confessing Christ has been the son of God. Be willing to go down in the water and grave of baptism for the mission of sins. The Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. Oh, yes, you may not be able to control a whole lot of things in your life. But the one thing that you can control, uh, you can control whether you obey the gospel or not. Uh, that's a choice that you need to make. Uh, you can control uh, whether you make that choice today. And if you uh, want to make that choice, uh, uh, please uh, reach out to the Beaumont Church of Christ and we'll, we'll be willing to come and do whatever we need to do uh, and, and do whatever we need to do for you to become a child of God. Uh, God bless you. God, may God keep you and may his face continue to shine upon you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday.